Okay. I'd like to call the meeting of the St. Louis County Board of Zoning Adjustment to order. The board members present today are Janet Herman, Chairman, and Angelia Bills, Vice Chairman. The BZA coordinator is Debbie Nesbitt, and staff members are, <clears throat> excuse me, Mel Wilson, Mel Wilson and Abby Freudel. First, I offer into the record the affidavit of publication pertaining to today's meeting, March 23rd, 2022. The board hereby takes official notice of and admits into evidence on the record the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance Chapter 1003, St. Louis County Revised Ordinance 1974 as amended, and Chapter 1004, St. Louis County Revised Ordinance 1974 as amended. Next, I call for a motion to approve the minutes of the previous BZA meeting of March 9th, 2022. So moved. And I, and I will second. The hearing procedure is informal, but is a teleconference and is recorded. The planning staff will read each request into the record. The petitioner will be unmuted, state their name, and make a brief presentation to the board explaining the reason and hardship for the requesting variance. The board will not consider financial hardships. Board members may ask questions to clarify the facts. When the board is satisfied with the material presented, the chairperson will then ask if there is anyone in favor or opposition to the request. If to indicate you would like to speak, please click the hand next to your name. If any comments were submitted, the staff will read them into the record. Before a call for the vote, the petitioner may request a continuance in order to bring in additional documentation. The board may also request a continuance to gather additional information or for a visit to the site. Once comments have been heard, the chairperson will call for a vote. At that time, the discussion is ended and no further discussion is permitted. The board will generally make a decision today. Two members of the board must vote in favor of the petition for it to be approved. Um, if, if, since there's only two of us here today, if we have a split vote, then it will have to wait until the, the third uh, member of the board can vote on it. Um, if a variance is approved, you have six months to obtain the necessary permits or establish the use requested or the variance will expire. The petitioner or any interested party has the right of appeal to the St. Louis County Circuit Court. This must be done within 30 days of the decision. Paperwork indicating the board's decision will be mailed to the petitioners. Twenty eight dash twenty two Cushman and Wakefield requests an exception to the sign regulations for the purpose of replacing an existing monument sign at thirteen five three seven Barrett Parkway Drive, maintaining a sign height of twelve feet in lieu of eight feet as required by the C eight planned commercial district regulations and section one zero zero three point one six eight sign regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance and C-8 Ordinance 20,285. And as you recall, um, we wrote a staff report for this petition recommending approval to allow more tenant names to be added to the monument sign and to increase visibility from Manchester Road, noting that a site distance study will be required and a special use permit will be necessary for any work in the county right of way. And um, Shannon Brown, you are unmuted to give your presentation. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, we are the property at 13515 Barrett Drive. Thanks for showing the image. There was already a monument there in the past, and uh, for some reason it uh, was damaged, I guess. And uh, so the base concrete base is still there. One of the issues they're having there at, at that facility is there's that one entrance. Thank you. One entrance coming in to the campus. There's four buildings on that campus. Um, and right now there's like 23 tenants there and they have about 15 vacancies. And there's a total of about 800, I think there's 804 parking spaces. So it's the main, it's the main entrance of the entire complex and there's nothing there. We noticed that if you look at the corner on Barrett and Manchester, there's a building right there. That's not part of their campus. It's the building to the right and further back, which is uh, part of the campus. But th the signage monument at eight foot is blocked by that building plus the distance that it's back from Barrett. 
makes it very challenging to see that you're at that at the correct uh, uh, campus. So we designed this to be able to put at least eight tenants, tenant names on there, and then be able to have the cap to be able to see the campus name. So eight feet is uh, for a wayfinding purpose is, is restrictive and it's very, it's challenging for the customers visiting there, driving north or south down Barrett Station. Plus you just can't turn, if you're going westbound on, on Manchester, you just can't make a left turn on Barrett. I'm sure many of you know that you have to go around another way to get there. So it's a, it's a challenging for, uh, for everyone. So we are requesting the new monument at, uh, at 142 inches tall, um, 89 wide, uh, but and still have at least, like I said, eight tenant names. Many of the tenants in the release agreement, they have rights to the to a to a monument sign. So having eight would, uh, you know, would probably take care of the uh, the property. Um, if we went to an eight foot, those names would be smaller and less visible. So basically, a wayfinding situation. I'm open for questions. Um. I, you know, I was just over there. I, I drove by it. I live not far from there. Um, 12, I, I know what you say mean by identification for those buildings, but um, 12 feet seems awfully high to me. But can you possibly do 10 feet? You know, I, I, uh, Janet, thanks. I, I, could, I could look at it. I can talk to the, uh, the building owner. Uh, if to change that whole structure, I don't know how that would impact the name you know of the campus that we have on that's you know capped at the top i mean i'm i'm, I'm open to it prefer 12 but uh you know i'll have to take you know whatever advice uh on the uh, abby on the um if you could go back to the the sign that i guess was there um do you know how high i guess thanks do you know how uh, mr brown how high that is how tall that is that the one that was there before, I don't, Janet. I sure don't. Because I don't remember it either. Well, I'm just thinking. Although it's twelve, you're right. It, it, we're it coming in at twelve foot, but the entire structure really isn't twelve because, as you can see, it's coming into more of a diamond shape at the top, a triangle shape rather. That uh, so in that center section, peaks at 12 uh you know under that it's it's 11 probably 11 feet i guess at the squared off base part of it maybe a little bit less than that so are you adding additional names to the monument is that why it needs to be taller well it's it's we're requesting taller that we get eight names Double sided, so there's eight names to put on on each side. Typically, one name gets both, you know, on both sides of it. Right. But the, the order, if you look at, the, I think I have spectrum on there. They get the mm -hmm. size of those letters on those on those panels inside there. You're right at eight feet with with basically no cap at all. So you can see uh, the tenant panel names, are, I think, are right at eight. If I'm not mistaken. So I pulled up the Google, this is Mel. I pulled up the Google street view of the old sign and it looks about to be as if the, as if the cap wasn't on there. It's about almost as tall as that street sign next to the exhibit. Mm. So shorter than what's proposed. Because there are currently eight names on this sign, right? There are this eight one, spaces. Yeah, we're proposing to be able to put eight tenant names. Yeah, because I'm looking at this sign. So is this the proposed one we're looking at, or is this the real sign we have now? This is the proposed sign. Okay. This is the one. This is our design proof, our design spec. For okay. Oh, so this would be at 12 feet? Yes, that is correct. Oh, well, that's what I was asking. I wonder, was wondering what the size of that was. I'm sorry. I thought that was the one that was there before. Um, All right, well, it's not that much taller than the, you know, I was looking at the ceilings in my house, you know, it, I think they're only eight or nine feet, that would be higher than that. But I guess it's not that much taller than that um, little sign to the right there. 
guess it's not as intrusive as I was picturing, picturing it. Um, okay, I guess I don't have any other, um, I, I mean, I know there is need for identification there. But, Thank you. But, um, okay, Angelia, do you have any other questions? No, I don't have any other questions either. Okay. Is there anyone on this that's, that wants to speak that's in favor or opposition? Please hit the hand by your name. I don't see anyone. Okay. 28-22, I'm going to go ahead and vote to prove it is advertised, the hardship being the need for um, identification for the buildings that sit back in there. I second it. Okay, we'll be sending you your paperwork. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Twenty nine dash twenty two Matthew Brown fireplace bar requests an exception to the regulations that govern the enlargement extension construction reconstruction or structural alteration of a non conforming use land or structure for the purpose of expanding an existing bar to allow outside dining and new kitchen area at 3377 tree court lane as required by nu urban district non-urban district regulations and section 1003.170 non-conforming uses lands and structures of the st louis county zoning ordinance Okay, Matthew Brown. Okay, you are now unmuted to give your presentation. Um, I was just going to have uh, Stephanie speak about it. Um, she's the runs the fireplace stuff, and um, I'm just we're both here together. Okay. Um, maybe we could both weigh in together, but uh, we're kind of new at this, so we're trying. Um, so basically, what we're proposing is we have the existing patio that's been there since I've been here. Um, well prior to my coming in 2004 all we're trying to do is get that covered under the liquor license um because it was in use the entire time and then we were informed that it was not covered under the liquor license so people that go outside to smoke are not able to have their alcoholic beverages with them um and what we are trying to do with the kitchen is it's already an existing kitchen area um, we hired Ford to come down and they did drawings for us um, to go ahead and get the kitchen equipment put in and open a restaurant um, and the outside patio area. We would like to put seating out there. It would be, you know, restaurant seating for people to be able to enjoy their meals out there as well. Um, the picture you're showing now is the front area. We want to put a wrought iron fence around a small one right around that area so that we could put a two top or two two tops and a four top out there for people to dine as well. Um, so that would also need to be covered under the liquor license if they were to have their wine or anything else out there. Um, but we're, we're trying to gear more towards restaurant um, and have it to where it's not a uh, tavern, you know, setting anymore. So everything that we're asking for is already been there. Um, it's just we're asking for it to be covered under the liquor license and then to be able to proceed for the applications of putting a restaurant back into the area, the kitchen area that's already there. Uh, but you have been serving food there, correct? No, just we, we serve frozen pizzas. And then occasionally customers will bring food. We were told that they can do that or we'll do like a barbecue for donation, um, but it's not bar food. We can't sell food. We have not been able to sell food other than the frozen pizzas from Andoros and Sons. So we are wanting to move forward and put a full kitchen in. There's no equipment in the kitchen. Um, so Ford drew all of that out for us, which I believe I forwarded with the paperwork, um, lining out where they would put the equipment, they would be handling all the installation um, and everything. We got the quotes from them, but before we could move forward with that, they said that 
you know, we needed to speak with you guys because it hasn't been a kitchen in operation since 2000 was my belief of the last time it was in operation. What we're trying to do is make this a more family oriented place. You know, that's what we're shooting for, for restaurants, you know, to be able to serve food and maybe tend to like Marshall Field and stuff like that. The baseball fields where kids have pizzas at and like French fries and stuff like that. We have the whole industrial court and they've asked me for years, you know, if we were going to open the kitchen and I said, you know, it's a slow process and we've moved forward trying to move things to a better way. Um, back in 2004, it was kind of a really rough place to come. We're just trying to change that whole atmosphere. We've done great with that. Um, and I would like to start offering food to the industrial court. I'm going to push more for lunches. That will be more of our advertisement so that we could use the industrial court and, and um, be able to provide them lunches. And then it would be nice to have people that do come down here in the evening to have the option of food um, and uh, a family atmosphere. If you're going to serve alcohol, it's better to serve food with alcohol, if you ask me. Okay. Uh, Angelia, do you have any questions right now? Yeah. Um, so, forgive me, I'm not familiar with the area, but basically, currently, is it just a bar or, or what's going on currently there? Yes, it's just a tavern. It's a, a, a tavern and, like I said, we, we sell frozen pizzas. Um, and then on the back patio area, we are also asking to be able to build a, um, uh, overhang over a portion of the patio so that it's covered. Um, it would be open on both sides, but it would just be to be able to cover people from weather. If you, if you could go to the overview, yeah. Um, where the red area is, you're looking at, that's going to be the covered area. And you can see the area is kind of small and off to the side, the back side of the prop, the side of the property. So basically, in the original drawings from like 19, I think it was 82, that concrete, that concrete patio has always been there, and it was labeled on the original drawings as like a beer garden. So it's been on there, and the state approved it as a beer garden, right? Or, or as a the state has it on the license, so we're just looking for an area where people can, you know, we could spread people out a little more. You know, okay. rather than having everybody conjoined in there and the food is the main thing out of all this that needs to happen. Okay, you go out there to smoke because we're non smoking. It's just a matter of the, you know, when we found out that they weren't allowed to have alcohol, we have to tell them they cannot take their alcohol out there. Which it's all fenced in with exit gates and everything. Uh, and I, I, I do know the area. I've been back in there several times looking at the homes in there and uh, I did drive over there again today. So I do know the area. Um, I believe, um, let's see if we have anybody that, that wants to speak in favor or opposition. Um, we had a few call in users. Okay. Oh, call in. Okay. So. Um, I guess you can get them set up then. Ed. Okay, Mr. Forrester, you're unmuted to give your, ask your question. Yeah, well, that was partially a right answer. It is, it's a, it's a little bar in a residential area. And we have had complaints already of noise that is going around for the close families in close proximity. And uh, that's one concern. Another one is, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Brown, but uh, I think you're on a septic tank and you have like maybe a third acre. And I'm not sure what the county code is, but that might have to be looked at. Uh, one neighbor has a well that's 100 feet away and another one has a well <clears throat> that's 200 feet away. So we're a little concerned about that. <laughs> Uh, the parking might be an issue. Uh, right across the road of Tree Court is Bausch and Lomb, the, <clears throat> the property of Bausch and Lomb, and there used to be no parking signs there because that's supposed to be a fire lane, and they've mysteriously disappeared, and that's 
where fire trucks are supposed to get through, and people have been parking there now because the signs have disappeared. So we're sort of a little bit unhappy about that. And only three people in this neighborhood were really given notice that this was going to happen today, when absolutely everything that happens at the fireplace affects everybody Uh in this neighborhood because that's the only way out. And so when it's the Final Four or World Series or whatever it might be, they have a lot of parking issues there, and I've seen people double park, and I can get my car through. But if a fire truck was coming, what, do they have to stop and run in, find out who's in the way? I mean, there has to be no parking out front, and I don't see that they have parking to uh, expand. And especially on a septic tank with a restaurant, you have to be kidding me. So, you know, if you have any questions, That's those are my concerns and plenty of other people down here. Okay. Are there other people on calls, did you say, Abby? I think we had one more, but now... Um, oh, we have uh, someone with a raised hand. That's me. Hello. All right, um, Mr. Jepson, you're unmuted to give your comment. Yes, I, I was on on the phone earlier as well. Yes. But <clears throat> when I finally got onto the the computer, it's um, I just dropped off that line. Um, okay. You know. My only comment has to do with uh, the fireplace bar. When when I was younger, we'd come down here. The fireplace always had food. Um, I would work in the industrial park with my dad, and and we would go there and eat lunch. And I think it provided a valuable service for the people of the uh, industrial park. And you know, and I think it would represent an upgrade to the to the restaurant from an industrial park, and from and from even from the neighborhood point of view. The more it can be adjusted from just a straight bar to more of a family oriented restaurant, I think that's an improvement in my eyes. You know, I'm I'm not discounting some of the concerns that, you know, about parking, but you know, <clears throat> parking and septic and that kind of stuff, those are all all issues that have to be addressed. I understand that. But um from a just a general concept, um, I think a food at the fireplace bar would be an improvement. It would make it more of a neighborhood bar like people have in South St. Louis rather than just a just a just a tavern. That's all I got. Do you see anyone else on Amy? We have two additional call in users that have since joined. Okay. Um so I'm gonna ask them to uh, <coughs> identify yourself. If you've joined the meeting using your phone, can you please identify yourself? Hello? If you've joined the meeting using your phone, can you please identify yourself? Okay, I'm not sure, um, but I don't see any other uh, raised hands. Okay, and um, I know we did get, um, I believe it was three emails um, sent in that I read that were all um, against this and they all, all pretty much said the same thing that the first, um, gentleman said about the parking, the septic tank, and the noise. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and, and I spoke with um, at least four different people on the telephone and who were concerned about the same things. Okay. Uh, Mr. Brown, is that your hand up on the thing? Yes, that's us. Yes. Uh, um, I'm sorry, no. We wanted to address um, some of the, the concerns uh, with the septic tank. It um, again, it was a restaurant previously. Um, well, for I think 
since 56 uh, it was um, and then all the way to 2000 the septic is laid out to where there are two large holding tanks um, and we have the drawings for those and I continuously treat it um, and it is uh, pumped out anytime that it even slightly gets um, to where probably way before I would need to. Um, that's something that I make sure is taken care of. Uh, um, with the noise, um, it's a bar. It, it has been here for a very long time. Um, we have not had noise complaints. It, I, I at least have not been addressed with noise complaints in over two years now. Um, since I have started to move the clientele to a completely different type of clientele. Um, and uh, there are some residents back there that do come up here and nobody has ever told me that there were noise complaints in the past two years. Um, when it comes to um, uh, any type of noise complaint, it's a bar, it's an existing business. So, I mean, I don't think that a restaurant is going to change that aspect of anything. Um, if anything, it would be a much quieter atmosphere because people, you know, aren't as loud when they're sitting and having dinner. Um, and again, just kind of moving towards a completely different atmosphere to where we can have different types of people here than we already do. And um, yeah, and whenever it comes to the parking and stuff, it's, we're not asking to up the occupancy. We're, we're only asking to have something that's already there included. And we're going to be driving more towards getting the industrial court lunch and dinner. So most of them would walk here anyway. We wouldn't have to worry about that parking. I, I don't think that I don't have a plan of going out. And once it becomes a restaurant, um, I, I don't foresee my evening business being a, a huge amount of difference than we already have um, with the parking issue as well. Uh, vehicles do park um, our property line uh, goes over across the road and vehicles have parked over on the side of the road. Um, and some of the fire department actually, you know, visits, visits my business. And there's never been an issue, and it is most definitely wide enough for a fire truck to go through um, when people are parked on that side and in our lot. It, it, it has not. We have had a customer or two parking in an incorrect spot, and as soon as it's recognized, myself or the person on staff at the moment immediately gets those people to move whenever it's been pointed out to us that somebody has parked in an incorrect spot. And if you pull up the overview for us, guys, and we can all look at this together, you will see how deep those parking lot spots are. So if you can blow up on that property to the driveway, those parking spots are probably, I would say 10 feet from the street in general, which that's all in, which the, basically the neighbors use that to drive through as it's not part of the easement. I don't complain about them driving on my property to get through. But technically, yeah. the property of ours goes all the way across the whole street, which I don't even believe that's a deed of easement. Approximately how many parking spaces do you have? 24, I believe. 24. Well, as they, um, this variance is to decide if if they can expand the use. And then after that, after you, if you choose to approve it, then they would continue with the site plan review and it would come into play. The parking spaces would need to be paved and there would be um, a count of, of uh, tables, employees, and all that would be taken into consideration. So they could have to provide more parking on the property. So this is basically the be very beginning of them getting to expand the restaurant. There's some more steps they have to finish. I agree 100%. I agree 100% with you. I mean, that's what we're trying to accomplish right now is we're just trying to get the ball rolling in the right direction. Mm -hmm. My main concern is the food. I really think people need food. I don't think people should be having drinks without 
being able to have some fries or a burger or something. I just. We're not asking to expand with any building because the patio is already there. We're just asking for it to be in use properly um, because it was used that way for many, many, many years through many owners. And then it was brought to my attention that it was not being in use properly. And that's whenever I started making the steps forward to find out how to do everything. Um, that's when the fences got built, the emergency exits on each side. Um, I've had, you know, a St. Louis County inspector tell me what would have to be done. The air conditioning units had to have a fencing around it. So I, we did all of this so that we could proceed and ask for that to be covered properly because it's not anything that hasn't been done already in the last 20, 30 years. And we know we're going to have to go forward. And also that asphalt is pretty new since I bought it. We are the ones that asphalted the parking lot. It used to be gravel. So we're trying to make improvements in the neighborhood. I don't know why people are against us, but I guess people are going to be that way. But at the same time with where we were and where we are now, we're just asking to move forward in the right direction and we will keep whatever we have to the next step is after this. That's what we'll do. We just need to get past this hurdle first. Okay, um, Angela, are you, um, do you have any other questions or are you ready to vote? Or? Uh, I, I just want to make sure, uh, Debbie, so you're saying basically we're voting on them to expand the use of the property, not necessarily approving like the parking spaces and things like that, right? Correct, they, they could very well need to come back after their site or during their site plan review process to ask for additional variances mm -hmm. uh, for parking possibly or for the patio cover um that kind of thing okay okay yes i'm ready to vote okay okay 29-22 i uh, vote to approve the variances advertised um, and I vote to deny. Um, so I, I'm very concerned about the, the other, other things just in general that I just don't think it's right for the neighborhood. So um, we'll have to have our other um, board member look at this and vote on it the next in um, two, two weeks from now. Uh, you probably they'd probably be the first ones on the docket, right, Debbie? Right. Yes. Okay, so we have a split vote, so we're going to have to have a third board member review this and and decide. Hello, Hello ma'am. Hello. We can hear you. Okay, so so that means that we'll do the same thing again in two weeks. Yes. Okay. Would there be anything that would help? Um, that we can also add in um, that you may feel we're lacking to show. You may want to chat with uh, the health department and ask them about the septic system. Is it going to be large enough, um, you know, to show okay. the board that there's that it is? Um, I, I don't know what else. Yeah, that's a, we have that has been discussed because again, I've asked health inspectors, you know, to uh, look at it as well with me. And so um, the septic is definitely not going to be an issue because there's two very, very large holding tanks. And they told me, I mean, they had to, I've had to have water tested. I've had to have send these things in for the health department because it's a business. So I know that we won't have any issues with that. And okay. can I ask a question? Can I ask a question too? You guys were saying you guys, uh, people were sending in emails that sway your guys' positions. Um, how can somebody send in an email to persuade a decision when they don't even know what we're exactly asking for? Uh, Mr. 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 Brown, none of the none of those emails. I've been on this board for twenty six years. I make my own decision. I do like okay, to hear yes, from both sides. <clears throat> I have been down to that area before. I know it. I just went down there again recently, looked at it. I, I just don't feel that it it's works for, I don't feel it's the right thing to do. You can have a lot more people there. You can have people outside with noise 
and um, no, nobody persuaded me. I vote on my own. Um, yes, there's going to be no more people. We're asking for the exact same amount of people. Well, I mean, more people outside. So that's all I have to say about it. Thank you. So, Abby, you want to go to the next one, please? <clears throat> okay. 30 22 William Stone requests an exception to the lot coverage requirements for the purpose of constructing a 24 foot round above ground swimming pool at 6407 Weber Road, maintaining a lot coverage of 8.3% in lieu of 7% as required by the R5 Residence District regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. Okay, um, <coughs> William Stone, you are unmuted to give your presentation. Hi. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so as you can see, our lot is very long. <laughs> um, so we are trying to put in a 24 foot round pool. If you look, there's a detached garage that measures 25 by 30. So I'll give you a good idea of scale. Um, we're trying to put it, yeah, directly behind the garage there. So there'll be a security camera on there. Um, the reason we went with the 24 foot, it was the only one that they had that measured the right height to not have to put a fence um, so that we wouldn't have to. My neighbor has a garage that doesn't have a driveway. So he has a little hot rod he tries to pull out uh, and he comes through past our garage onto our driveway and pulls out when a couple of times a year he takes it and a fence would get in the way. Um, so we went with that so that we could get the taller pool uh, to be a little safer. Um, and as far as the size, um, we have some family members that are immunocompromised, so that really love to swim. The backyard is a big open area. Uh, we want to give them an opportunity to be able to kind of come together as a family, all 10 of <laughs> um, and be in an area where we can kind of control who's there, who's not, um, just to protect that. So that's why we went with that particular size, not to mention the next size down, if they'd even had it, which is the 21 foot, which would have also put us over, unfortunately. Um, so there's a fence on the right hand side and you can see, I mean, we'll be about 70 feet from the rear fence and about 12 to 14 feet on either side. Um, so, yeah, we're just trying to get that kind of put in. <laughs> if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer. Uh, I don't, I don't have any other questions. I see, I see your lot is a, yeah, long and narrow. Here. <laughs> so, but you're meeting your. <laughs> yeah. You're meeting your side yard. I mean, all your yard variances is it's only the lot coverage. So, um, correct. I don't have any other questions, Angelia. Do you? No, I don't either. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there anyone on this that's in favor or opposition that would like to speak? Please hit the hand next to your name. I don't see anyone. Okay. Uh, Thirty dash twenty two. I'm going to vote to approve the variances advertised. The hardship being the. Um, is small lot size. I second it. Okay, your paperwork will be sent to, to you, Mr. Stone. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Okay, that's well, it. I guess um, we'll see what.